Today's episode is brought to you by War Thunder. As we've seen in many mythologies, the sun and the moon were believed to have been physical representations of actual deities. In other accounts, the gods would ferry the sun and the moon across the sky as a means to explain why and how the sun and the moon appeared in different places in the sky, depending on the time of day. To the ancient Egyptians, this was the sun god Ra, who in his barge would ferry the sun across the sky before being swallowed up by the underworld to commence nightfall. The Greeks had a similar notion with Helios, the sun god, who in his chariot, much like Ra's barge, would soar across the sky in the same pattern as the sun was believed to. The same was also true of Selene, a deity who the Greeks believed also commandeered a chariot and orchestrated the movement of the sun itself. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is a comprehensive vehicle combat game, available on PC, Xbox Series XS and PlayStation 5. Scour the battlefield in over 2,000 different heavy artillery vehicles, including tanks, aeroplanes and ships, as you duke it out in explosive PvP battles. Each vehicle is incredibly designed down to its very core components, and so each one you decide to use will have a uniquely different feel. Try them all to find the best one to fit your playstyle. You can even customise your ride with camouflage plates, decals and 3D decorations, such as bushes and trees, to get the drop on your opponent. One thing that stood out to me when playing War Thunder was the detailed x-ray system, where you can see exactly where your shells have penetrated the enemy's hull, and access exactly how much damage you've done to your opponent. Try War Thunder now on PC, Xbox Series XS and PlayStation 5, as well as last gen consoles. If you use my exclusive link in the description below, you'll receive a large free bonus pack, containing multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and much, much more. And now back to Selene. Unfortunately, there do not exist descriptions of Selene which have survived from the ancient world, other than her appearance as the moon, of course. In a Homeric hymn, only her role and some miscellaneous information is revealed to us, where we are told, And next, sweet-voiced muses, daughters of Zeus, well-skilled in song, tell of the long-winged moon, from her immortal head, a radiance is shown from heaven and embraces earth, and great is the beauty that ariseth from her shining light. The air unlit before glows with the light of her golden crown, and her rays beam clear. Whensoever bright Selene, having bathed her lovely body in the waters of the ocean, and donned her far gleaming raiment, and yoked her strong neck, shining team, drives on her long manned horses at full speed at even time in the mid-month. Then her great orbit is full, and then her beams shine brightest as she increases, so she is a sure token and a sign to mortal men. Going from this passage, we can see that much of Selene's physicalities are not actually detailed, though from other hymns she's attributed with having lovely hair, which is both long and worn in locks. In an Orphic hymn, meanwhile, she is described as maintaining horns, as well as carrying with her a torch. As far as classical artwork goes, Selene maintains some consistent characteristics, including an arched veil over her head, a torch in her hand, and a crescent moon featured behind her head, or as an accessory upon her head. Selene, however, has also changed over the years, sometimes appearing long-haired, short-haired, and with varying degrees of beauty and colour. Like the moon, it seems that she too changed in appearance, sometimes appearing full, sometimes half, and sometimes crescent-shaped. One mythological tale speaks of Selene's mother, Thea, attempting to clothe her daughter. But each time she knits her a garment, Selene changes shape. Her name, Selene, was believed to have been derived from the Greek noun selas, meaning light or brightness a possible reference to how bright and luminescent the moon can appear. In other traditions, she was known as the Greek mean, which also happened to mean moon. With this, it's easy to see that to some, Selene wasn't just a deity who was responsible for the moon, but that she was the moon incarnate. As mentioned, Selene was the daughter of the titaness Thea, who had married the titan Hyperion, both of whom maintained a realm of influence over light. 
Her siblings were Helios and Eos, the former being the titan god of the sun and the latter being the titan goddess of the dawn. Much like her brother Helios, who drove the sun, Selene was responsible for driving the moon, which is how the ancient Greeks explained the moon's ever-changing position in the sky. In some interpretations, Selene was believed to ride on a horse, or drove a silver chariot that was drawn by either winged horses or oxen. Again, like her brother, this was also the case for Helios, who was believed to herald the sun across the sky in a similar chariot of his own. As far as the mythology goes, Selene does appear in several well-known tales, the first and foremost being her romantic involvement with the mortal Endymion. The story goes that on her journey across the night sky, Selene spotted Endymion sleeping and believed him to be the most beautiful man she had ever seen. Every night, she was said to descend from the sky to be with Endymion, though because of her duty as the moon, she was forced to be apart from him. So with this, Selene visited Zeus and asked him to grant Endymion eternal sleep, so that she might be able to visit him forever. Indeed, though she could not speak to him, or have any real interaction with the sleeping Endymion ever again, it did prevent him from growing old and dying. In his sleeping state, she could also continue to at least see him, and thus also prevent him from finding another love and living his life without her. You might argue that Selene acts selfishly in her efforts to maintain her romance, and that essentially freezing Endymion asleep ultimately robs him of his own decision and life. But there are those who see the more romantic side of the story and champion Selene as a tragic character who knew that because of her duty and status as a god, she could never be with Endymion and be happy, much less be with him forever considering his mortality. So she chooses the only happiness she can maintain and that is to preserve him in a suspended animation, arguably neither living or dead. Of course, the tale has since spawned many different versions, and because of the nature of the original text, which is fragmentary and inconclusive, the story itself is open to interpretation. In other versions of this story, Endymion was a son of Zeus, and that granted him the luxury of being able to choose how he died. With this, Endymion chose the most peaceful option he could think of, which was to die in his sleep. In another version, the eternal sleep is a punishment from Zeus, because Endymion had tried it on with his wife Hera. In either account, it would appear that Selene can continue to be seen as a tragic character, at the whims of the circumstances around her. She's denied her love by Zeus on both occasions, either owing to the fact that Zeus forces Endymion to choose his death, or forces death upon him. In another version, Endymion was believed to have rejected Selene, and so, her request that he be put to sleep forever was to maintain the facade that they could be lovers, and so that she could kiss him in his sleep. The Syrian satirist Lucian of Samosata tells us of a different version, where Selene fights for the affections of Endymion against a girl named Muir. Muir, who was mortal, was able to spend more time with Endymion, but because she was so talkative, she kept Endymion awake at night. Enraged over Muir's closeness to Endymion, and irritated that she had kept him awake, Selene transforms the girl into a fly. Supposedly, the girl still exists in the form of this fly, bothering those who are trying to sleep with a conversation. Going by other stories, Zeus once again has his way with whatever woman he wants by having children with Selene. These include Pandia, Ursa, and Nemea the nymph. But if you know any other myths containing Selene, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. As always, if you've enjoyed today's episode on Greek mythology explained, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And furthermore, if you like Greek mythology as much as I do, you might like to check out a copy of our book, Greek Mythology Explained, where we retell a couple of our favourite myths and explore the meanings and themes behind them. Lastly, don't forget to check out War Thunder, and use my exclusive link in the description below. With all that being said, I hope you all have a good evening, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time.